were in a race against the Nazis. And I know what it means if the Nazis have a bomb. Killian Murphy plays the father of the atomic bomb in Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer. This is a matter of life and death. I can perform this miracle. World War II would be over. Our boys would come home. We're trying to not judge the man. We're trying to experience things with him and understand the man. And I felt that Killian, who's one of the great actors of his generation of all time, he has that unique empathetic ability to draw the audience into the, the truth of the situation. Nolan sought Murphy for the title role after casting him as a supporting character in five previous films. I was so exhilarated to be given the opportunity. You know, it's a kind of a dream part, but, but it's so multifaceted and massive. His co-stars also felt the scope of the story and the film. A huge amount of humility was required from this whole cast to kind of come in and say, this is a really delicate and important story and we want to uh, service it correctly. It confronts you with things that are so much bigger than you on, on a human level and on the, a physical world level in what we live in. And yet it, uh, it's an emotional movie because of because Chris really and Killian really pulled off that initial thing that he said. It's you it's it, you do come through Oppenheimer's heart. eyes. I don't know if we can be trusted with such a weapon. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Here at home, San Antonio ISD needs help. It's holding a summer educator job fair. The district wants people to work for its elementary, middle, and high schools. The fair happening at Lanier High School today from 5 to 7 p.m. Take your resume and good luck. We'll head the next hour of GMSA. Outrage at the border over how DPS troopers and soldiers from the Texas National Guard are allegedly treating migrants. And up next, wild video shows a car flying through the air and into a house. How the deadly crash unfolded on camera in just moments. And Trans Guide, flashing lights at 10 and 35. We'll be back. This morning on GMSA, San Antonio fire crews say a blaze destroyed a house on the city's south side. What we've been able to learn from that scene, plus. But if it was true and if it did happen, then heads need to roll. That's inhumane. New allegations of inhumane treatment along the southern border. What we've learned about the accusations and the fallout. And looking out there with live cam. So earlier this morning, we saw uh, the temperature on your screen at 80 degrees at 78. We'll take whatever tiny little relief we'll, we can get. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. Hope you slept well last night. It is 6 a.m. on your Wednesday, July 19th. Thank you for joining us this morning. Yes, another morning of iced coffee would be good for you instead of warm coffee. Actually, there are some people who drink it warm, even though when it's super hot outside. Oh, they do. It's yeah. a morning ritual for sure, yeah. but it was also been a morning ritual these days lately. Has mm -hmm. been temperatures in the upper 70s for morning lows. Normal low is 75 degrees. So obviously, as time goes on, we mm -hmm. don't we're not that much above the the average temperature, but still, I, that's going to be the trend though to remain above average for low as well as high temperatures and. Today Today, once again, nine above where we should be later on this afternoon. We hit 104 and tied the record yesterday. We hit 104 the day before that, and we're going to make it three in a row today. As you can see, we do have a lot of clear skies out there. We see an airplane there off in the distance lining up for landing. 78 here in town, so we have dropped down a couple of notches. So mid and upper 70s all around the area. And the humidity is up a bit compared to yesterday, especially around Canyon Lake, New Braunfels, Randolph Stinson. So heat index readings right now, 83 Canyon Lake, 81 at Stinson, and 82 over there at Castroville, mid 70s parts of the hill country mold is on the low side of course the updated count comes out later on this morning 92 at noon like i said 104 high temperature again today not a record i don't know if that really matters that much but uh the record being 106 and obviously it's going to be very hot out there but at least the humidity will be dropping down somewhat so we don't have as widespread of heat advisories or excessive heat warnings in effect these go into effect till eight o'clock tonight even some of the hill country and rio grande valley taken out of this but but obviously you still have to use those precautions with the very hot temperatures out there. Temperatures will ease a degree or two as we go on in time. What about those rain chances? 
don't get really excited about it, they still do exist. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, got big problems, right? Yep, Mike. Unfortunately, things have not changed here at I-10 at 35. Let's show you what's happening because traffic down to one lane. We have a major crash that's been reported by our friends over at TxDOT, and it does look like we have multiple emergency vehicles out there. Again, three lanes are blocked at this time, and we're getting ready to send a notification to your case at mobile app. Just make sure those uh, notifications are turned on. You see, traffic is moving pretty slow right now, and it's in fact backed up uh, at least up until ProBent, that's where we're really starting to see that delay take place. And this is a very busy spot as folks are making their way around the area. You're starting to see a lot more of that orange and yellow take over. Just not a good sign. Again, traffic slowing down right around ProBent. So we'll keep a close eye on that. But again, multiple emergency vehicles out there. Never a good sign. Giving you a wide look now at our map, though, I'm not spotting any other issues. We have really been talking about a lot of that overnight construction. Most of it has wrapped up and uh, none of it has slowed folks down, especially if your travels are going to take you right here to the Alamo City. Luckily, you're still in the green from Seguin along I-10 westbound. A 31 minute commute is what you can expect at this hour. 33 along 87 northbound from Lavernia and our friends from down in Floresville can expect about a 29 minute commute. So again, these areas are not really too concerning right now, but the problem remains here at I-10 at I-35. I'll keep a close eye on that and let's keep our fingers crossed. We'll see this wrap up before morning rush does get here. Mark. There this morning is an active Amber Alert out of Northeast Texas. Police in Tyler, east of Dallas, are looking for one year old Jamar Ross. He has black hair and brown eyes. Police also looking for 26 year old Tarandia Jackson in connection with the abduction. She's about six feet tall, black hair and brown eyes. Police believe the child is in danger. If you have any information that can help, call the Tyler Police Department at the number on your screen. That is area code 903 531. 1000. New this morning, the U.S. Geological Survey reporting two earthquakes in our area overnight. The survey says two separate quakes rumbled about 11 miles east of Pleasanton. It says a 3.2 magnitude quake happened just after midnight this morning. The other happened around 1122 last night. So far, we haven't received any reports of damage. Also new this morning, San Antonio fire crews were up overnight putting out a fire at a vacant home. It happened around midnight in the 300 block of East South Cross on the city's south side. Firefighters almost kept flames from damaging nearby structures, but a nearby car was burned. Investigators say the house is a total loss and requested for the city to tear it down. No injuries were reported. New details this morning on a delay of an honorable discharge hearing for a former Uvalde Police Department Lieutenant. Mariano Parga is the acting police chief for the Uvalde Police Department. The day of the Robb Elementary tragedy received a general discharge from the department when he left in November of 2022. This came after it was revealed he knew children were in the classroom with the gunman, but failed to act or share that information. Bodyguards is appealing the discharge, hoping to have it changed to honorable. Right now, the city is delaying the hearing, pending the results of the ongoing investigation into Bodyguards by the city. Bear County is being sued for racial discrimination by a business owner. The lawsuit claims both the county and Lift Fund, the organization tasked with awarding funds for the Bear County Small Business Assistance Program, discriminated against small business owners based on race. The program's application awarded points to businesses owned by veterans, women, and minorities. The higher the score, the more likely the business would get selected. Well, Greg Gom, the owner of Digital Desk here in San Antonio, and a group called the Wisconsin Institute of Law and Liberty have filed a suit stating Gom was put at a disadvantage because race and gender were taken into account. Attorney Dan Lennington explains what a win in court would look like to him. That Bear County stops discriminating based on race, um, that they're told that what they did was illegal. This is not about monetary damages. It's not about um, uh, what our client could get as far as dollar amounts. It's about making the behavior stop this comes after the Supreme Court ruled places of higher education could not take race into consideration in the admissions process. Lennington says the ruling has broader implications. Both Bear County and Lift Fund declined to comment. Topping your morning headlines, new allegations of inhumane treatment along the southern border. A state trooper in Texas claims officers were ordered to push migrant children back into the Rio Grande and even deny migrants water in the extreme heat. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest on accusations and the fallout. 
This morning, ABC News has obtained emails sent from a Texas state trooper to his superior describing, quote, inhumane policies on the border, saying troopers were told to deny migrants water and were even told to push children back into the river. The trooper saying we decided this was not the correct thing to do with the very real potential of exhausted people drowning. It's hard for me to imagine a Texas a law enforcement member uh, thinking that those things were OK, but if it was true, and if it did happen, then heads need to roll. That's inhumane. In response, the Texas Department of Public Safety issued a statement saying the troopers are the ones who perform rescues while trying to stop migrants from placing themselves in harm's way. The trooper also raised concern about the risk posed by newly installed razor wire, providing pictures of serious injuries suffered by migrants and describing a pregnant woman who got stuck in the wire and experienced a miscarriage. Texas Governor Greg Abbott's office responding, saying Texas is deploying every tool and strategy to deter and repel illegal crossings between ports of entry. Critics question if that strategy is going too far. We know here from this email that we have a medic within the Department of Public Safety that had a crisis of conscience that said we are treating these people in, in, a, in a horrible, inhumane way. Meanwhile, the latest data from Homeland Security shows a 30% decrease in migrant encounters at the southern border compared to this time last year. M1, ABC News, Washington. In other headlines, we're learning a little more about the American soldier who the White House says willfully crossed the demilitarized zone into North Korea yesterday, where he's now detained. U.S. Army says Private Travis King was going to be administratively separated from the Army after facing disciplinary action for assault. He was escorted to a South Korean airport to go back to the U.S., but when the escort couldn't go through customs with him, King was able to leave that airport, join a tour group, and then cross into North Korea. And if you're not looking at your TV right now, come over and look at this new video out of St. Louis. A doorbell camera caught this video yesterday afternoon, so you can see a driver flying through the air and crashing into a home. That driver died from their injuries. No one was inside the home uh, was hurt. 610, 78 degrees. And still to come, a new cybersecurity program from the White House helping people choose smart devices that are less vulnerable to hacking at works before 6.30. And after the break, an Australian sailor who survived months at sea with his dog is finally back on dry land. How they were able to survive, and more importantly, how they were rescued. The story is amazing, and looking out there with live cam here at home, 78 degrees for now. Well, that's tolerable compared to the triple digits we'll face later on. Good luck staying out of the heat today. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Just about 614. Take a look at this. He looks a little like Tom Hanks in the movie Castaway. This morning, an incredible story of surviving adversity. An Australian man sailing across the Pacific got stranded at sea. As ABC's Rihanna Nally reports, he and his dog spent months in the ocean before rescuers found them. He may look like Tom Hanks in Castaway. But for Australian sailor Timothy Shattuck and his dog Bella, being adrift at sea for months was a real and harrowing experience. Shattuck stepped back onto dry land yesterday for the first time in three months. Oh, I'm feeling all right. I, uh, I'm feeling a lot better than I was, I can tell you. Back in April, he and his dog set sail from the Mexican city of La Paz, hoping to reach French Polynesia. But weeks into the journey, Shattuck says bad weather crippled his boat, knocking out the electronics and his ability to cook. He and Bella had to survive on raw fish. The health was, was pretty bad for a while. I was pretty hungry and um, and I, I didn't think I'd make it through the, the storm. Finally, after months without seeing dry land, a helicopter launched from a fishing boat searching for tuna spotted Shattuck 1,200 miles from land. I was just very grateful. The crew provided Shattuck with medicine, food and water before returning him to land. And while Tom Hanks had Wilson by his side, we okay? Shattuck had Bella at his. She's amazing. Like she's, I mean, yeah, that, that dog is, is something else. He says before setting sail, Bella followed him around Mexico, refusing to leave his side. He tried to find her a home without success. But now 
After Bella was a hit with the fishing boat crew, one of the crew members is taking her home. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. And I can imagine that the dog kind of comforted him through yeah. that journey, right? I think they helped each other. As long as they were able to keep, keep catching fish, they were yes. going to be okay. And getting that rainwater and as getting well. getting that rainwater, that's right. It's got to be a movie one day, right? I think so. 616. Let's check back with Stephen Cavazos. Hey guys, better update here at I-10 at 35. That major crash that was reported earlier looks to have cleared out and both the east and westbound lanes look pretty uh, much back to normal. You can see it right there behind me. Traffic's moving a little bit busier, but we're no longer spotting those emergency vehicles out there. It wasn't there for too long, but uh, during that time we saw a little bit of a, a little bit of a buildup, pardon me, along I-10 westbound and I-35. Now our map is still reflecting that, but you're seeing that traffic's moving a lot better than what we saw earlier. Three lanes had been blocked and we were just down to one. Now uh, again, we still have a little bit of a slowdown taking place out there, but I think that's going to pick up here in the next few minutes as more people are getting moving and the commute does get rolling for a lot more folks around the Alamo City. Giving you a wide look at the map, of course, you can expect a lot of construction to take place. We've really been spotting a lot of overnight construction. There was a lot of it that wrapped up earlier and just keep this in your back pocket here. I-10 over on the east side of Bear County, we have paving work. This is also overnight and it begins at 8 this evening and should wrap at six in the morning. This is going to happen all the way up until Saturday, July 22nd. And it's during that time we'll see a single eastbound main lane closure from Greytown Road to File Road. There's a lot of overnight construction and even construction happening later today. So scan this QR code if you're still at home. We have all the information you need to know before you have to go. It takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page and there's a whole lot happening in and around our area. But as I mentioned, we've really spotted a lot of those crews overnight here. So that has been the trend with these road projects. We're seeing a lot of it, I guess, just trying to beat the heat. Yeah, really. It's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Working hard and smarter too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's a lot. It's a lot better to do that. When I first looked at this picture, oh. I mean, here I saw it as we've seen so many folks sending in pictures of squirrels. Yes. Look oh. real close. Yeah, he's yes. got a friend. Got a friend. Yeah. A squirrel and a rabbit walking Squirrel and a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> squirrel and a rabbit sploot in the garden. Yeah. And there's the joke. But yeah, no joke. Yeah, <laughs> trying to keep cool. And uh, if you have to do anything outside, yeah, it's best opportunities as you can to uh, do it earlier on in the day before things really start to, uh, to heat up. And again, at least we get the break in the humidity, but it's still that intense sunshine that really gets you. A lot of clear skies right now. 78 in town. Normal low is 75, so we are three degrees above normal. Obviously, that has been the trend for recent memory and is going to be the trend as we go into the weekend and next week. 79 right now at uh, Castorville as well as Canyon Lake. We'll make it up through the 80s this morning. A lot of sunshine, maybe one or two clouds hanging around here this morning. 92 already at noon and third day in a row. We're going to hit 104. Record today is 106 and a record yesterday. We did tie it and next uh, few days as far as the humidity, at least it will stay on the tolerable side. 60 is always that kind of threshold when you get below that it's much more comfortable out there. Your body can cool itself a little more easily, a little more efficiently. You get above that and that's when that's when it's really miserable to be outside. So at least we will have that lower humidity. Here's the high, which is sitting almost right on top of us, and that's covering basically you know, the southern half of the country and especially the southwestern chunk of the country where all those uh, record high temperatures are right around Phoenix and just baking as well like we have. This thing is finally going to start to ease just a little bit. And as it kind of moves off here, it's still under, it's still controlling us, but at least temperatures will begin to trim a degree or two as we go into the next couple of days. And then as it continues to work its way off to the west, we'll get into a bit of a northwesterly flow around here. Now, this is not any, any sure bet, but at least in that scenario, you can get a little disturbance trying to move on in here. That's going to be the case late Saturday, maybe Sunday, and then also as that scooches off a little bit further to the west, the Gulf is going to at least be open for the chance for a couple of sea breeze showers or two. So this is kind of a speculation forecast, if you will, as far as rain chances around here. Late Saturday, Sunday, going into the first part of next week, the opportunity will be there for just a couple of showers, hence the reason why it's 20, basically 10% chance for some rain and temperatures will still stay in the low hundreds going into the first part of next week.
Okay, low triple digits. Right, and it is even looking like that will continue on through most all of next week and probably all the way in toward the end of the month as well. Goodness, okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll look for the shade still. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 621, 78 degrees. And just ahead, Messi mania has arrived in the U.S. as soccer superstar Lionel Messi joins MLS team Inter Miami. Co-owners David Beckham and Jorge Mas are speaking out about his arrival, and we're going to have a preview next. There it is. That feeling you get when you can do more with less asthma. It starts with Dupixent. Dupixent is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma and can help improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks. Dupixent helps prevent asthma attacks and can even reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Can you picture it? Dupixent can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about newer worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Who knows what you can do when you do more with less asthma? Ask your asthma specialist about Dupixent. In this morning's GMA First Look, when it comes to reshaping the world of professional soccer, no one's bending it quite like Beckham. Lionel Andres Messi! As co-owners of Inter Miami, David Beckham and Jorge Mas shocked the world by announcing Lionel Messi's move to an American soccer team. This morning, they're speaking out to GMA. Now that it's official, can you open up a little bit? Tell us about the process of luring Leo Messi, the best soccer player in the world, to Miami. There could be three major events in the history of the sport in this country. Pelé in 1972, David Beckham in 2007, and Lionel Messi in, in, in 2023. To bring a player like that to now play in the MLS, to play for our team, you know, it's bigger than just, you know, winning trophies. Yes. And we'll have much more with David Beckham and what's in store for Lionel Messi coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. In your consumer headlines, the White House announcing a new plan for smart home devices. Starting next year, devices connected to the Internet will have certain labels that tell if it's met security standards set by the federal government. If you have recently joined Meta's version of Twitter threads, then you should start seeing its first update. There is now a follows tab on the activity feed so users can see who just followed them. A translate button has also been added. And Twitter CEO Elon Musk says they're working on a new feature that will allow users to post long articles and even books. It's part of a plan to attract more creators to the platform. It's unclear when Twitter will start rolling this feature out. And time now, 626 and 78 degrees for now. Still ahead at 630, an update on an Amber Alert. Uh, phones uh, went out, uh, I'm sorry, that went out to phones across the state. What police in Northeast Texas say you should be on the lock, lookout for this morning. And the man you see here is behind bars after robbing a series of stores. Why money wasn't the only thing he took and how he and another suspect were caught. And we're still watching uh, 90 at 35, one of a couple spots we're watching this morning. Stephen Cavazos will have an update for you coming up at the bottom of the hour. Shocked and surprised. Um, didn't really feel anything. Most are stirred but not shaken after two earthquakes here in Pleasanton overnight. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you why this may not be an isolated case coming up has nothing to do with border security. This is, uh, this is border insanity. Right now at GMSA, some outrage at the border, how DPS troopers and soldiers from the Texas National Guard are allegedly treating migrants. What Texas Governor Greg Abbott is saying about this issue. Let's look out there with a live cam, 78 degrees for now. We feel lucky here on GMSA. Well, I feel lucky at least not having to drive into work when the sun is beating down on you, because even you know, driving can be taxing on you. And a good morning to you, 6.30 on your Wednesday, July 19th. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, pack that extra water, uh, the shade for your car. Don't don't forget that or maybe buy a new one because it's the sun is really coming down in the afternoon. And our, one of our morning producers earlier uh, sent us an article that you can even get 
uh, heat related problems, mm -hmm. swimming in a pool that's 90 degrees or warmer, even heat stroke swimming in a pool or lake. Yeah, and also you can get uh, dehydrated being in the water like that as well. So yeah, lots of uh, hydration. You just have to take it easy. And even though we don't have the widespread heat advisories and things have been kind of uh, taken down a notch as far as uh, excessive heat warnings, I'll show you that in a moment, you still got use those precautions when you're out there and that's going to be the situation for the foreseeable future 78 right now 2.72 so we are three above normal and yeah fair amount of humidity out there this morning although that will be dropping down by later on this afternoon and all around the area feels like 83 at canyon lake 81 castroville stinson new braunfels mid 70s in the hill country low amounts of mold out there the update account will come out later on this morning and here's that uh, heat advisory excessive heat warning outlook or map I should say for later on or throughout the afternoon up until eight o'clock tonight. Frio Atascosa County still had the excessive heat warnings and even though it has been downgraded elsewhere or deleted elsewhere, like I said, use the, the precautions when you're outside, especially in that direct sun because it makes you feel hotter by about good 10, 15 degrees at least. So warm and humid this morning and then later on today, 104, third day in a row. We hit it uh, Monday, Tuesday, today, yesterday, of course, that tied the record, but the low humidity in the afternoon down a degree or two over the next few days, low hundreds over the weekend. And yes, there's still that chance for a shower in the forecast, uh, but as I've been saying all morning long, don't get really excited about that. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, so that big problem. Yeah. Downtown cleared out. was cleared out. Okay. It's cleared out, Mike, but uh, we're getting busy as the morning commute does pick up here. Let's get a quick look around town. There is 35 at New Braunfels. I'm not spotting major issues out there, but you're seeing a lot of these trans guide cameras show that traffic is definitely moving, especially here at 35 at San Marcos and 37 at Jones Avenue. Watch out, though. We had a few stall vehicles that uh, were cleared out pretty quickly, but nonetheless, it's still pretty dark and, uh, for a lot of folks that are just waking up and just make sure you move over or slow down if you encounter any of those stall vehicles or crash sites. Thankfully, we're not spotting that here on our map or on any of the Transguide cameras, but we've seen a lot of the construction that wrapped up overnight. More is expected later today, and I'll talk about that a little later on. Do want to get you to some travel times. If you plan on hitting the roads and maybe heading to the Alamo City this early in the morning, nothing's slowing you down. Take a look there, folks. You're pretty much in the green anywhere you're traveling from this early in the morning. But uh, again, watch out for some of the construction that's expected to ramp up a little bit later this morning. As we give you one last look around Transguide, not spotting issues, but we will watch the roads closely and I'll have an update on other road closures a little bit later on in the newscast. Mark. What should have been an earth moving experience has gone almost unnoticed among people down in Pleasanton. Well, records show that two earthquakes rumbled through that area overnight. Katrina Weber live in Pleasanton with that story. Katrina, was there any damage? Well, not that I know of. I actually did check with the police and the sheriff's office, and they say they had no reports of any damage. Now, according to the U.S. Geological Survey, damage is usually associated with quakes that are a magnitude four or stronger. That agency reported that the strongest one that hit this Pleasanton area was a magnitude 3.9, and that was after 11.30 last night. The second quake was a magnitude 3.2, and that was shortly before one this morning. The records also show there was another minor quake in this area Monday afternoon, but instead of feeling shaken, people here seem more shocked. Didn't really feel anything. We were busy, you know, doing our job, but um, yeah, we don't really get that around here. Now that was the reaction that I got from most of the people here who I talked to, most of them not even realizing that they had not just one, but two earthquakes overnight. Now there was one person who uh, I spoke to who did know, and that was the clerk at that convenience store. He says, though, he only found out about it because he got an alert on his phone. But again, no damage reported. Reporting live in Pleasanton, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. This morning, there is an active Amber Alert out of North Texas. Police in Tyler are looking for one-year-old Jamar Ross. He has black hair and brown eyes. And police are also looking for 26-year-old Tarandia Jackson in connection with the abduction. She's about six feet tall and has black hair and brown eyes. So police believe the child is in danger. If you have any information that can help, you're asked to call the Tyler Police Department. That number is on your screen. That's 903-531-1000.
This morning, Governor Greg Abbott is defending Operation Lone Star, saying the policy is not compromising the lives of those crossing the border. That's after a state trooper said migrants were left bloodied from razor wire barriers and that orders were given to deny people water in sweltering heat. Case that's John Paul Barajas explains now some want the governor to suspend Operation Lone Star. It has nothing to do with border security. This is uh, this is border insanity. All of this represents a new despicable low. Democratic members of the Texas congressional delegation reacting to allegations against Governor Greg Abbott's Operation Lone Star, along with Republican Tony Gonzalez saying in part, quote, I find it disturbing for anyone, much less a child, to be deprived of water in 100 degree weather, regardless of their immigration status. Those allegations were made by a state trooper via email to a supervisor saying patrols were ordered to, quote, push the people back into the water to go to Mexico, deny migrants drinking water in extreme temperatures, and that the razor wire is a, quote, inhumane trap that should be removed. We cannot be for inhumanity. We cannot be for murder. We cannot be for aggravated assault. Domingo Garcia is the national president of the League of United Latin American Citizens, known as LULAC. He agrees border security is needed, but believes that it can't cross moral lines. The blood of those five immigrants who died last week on that river, it's on you, Governor Abbott. Those reacting today asked for a swift investigation by the Department of Justice, including State Senator Roland Gutierrez. His statement says in part, there are a few greater sins in this world than watching children scream in agony from traps that were set for them. Gutierrez also wants federal authorities to shut down Operation Lone Star. The White House reacting to the report as well. If they are true, uh, it is abhorrent, it is despicable, uh, it is dangerous. And Governor Abbott's office sent out a joint statement with the Department of Public Safety that reads in part, no orders or directions have been given under Operation Lone Star that would compromise the lives of those attempting to cross the border illegally. It goes on to say all personnel assigned to Operation Lone Star are prepared to detect and respond to any individuals who may need water or medical attention. And we have that full statement on our website, KSAT.com. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. The search continues for a man who police say shot and killed someone on city's southwest side. So far, all police have to go on are these two pictures of a suspect on a bicycle. The shooting happened just after 6 in the morning back on July 10th. Police say this man shot Juan Martinez in the head six times while he was sleeping behind a Little Caesars pizza on Old Pearsall Road. If you recognize this person or know anything about the shooting, call Crime Stoppers. The number is 210-224-STOP. 224-7867. At another arrest to tell you about this morning, police say uh, this may have been a case of retaliation after someone died. 20-year-old Evan Favila, Favila rather, is now in custody for an incident that happened back in April of last year. <clears throat> According to an arrest affidavit, he and two others allegedly fired shots at a home and vehicle and also sprayed them both with graffiti. Police say he and the other suspects then posted videos on social media referencing someone who died. Now Favila is charged with charged with uh, deadly conduct with a firearm. Right now, 639, 78 degrees. And just ahead, important news if you take prescription medications, how the food you eat could keep your meds from working. Many people have to take medication to help with their day-to-day -day lives. But did you know the food you eat could be stopping those medications from working? KSAP producer Haley Powers breaks down the top five foods that affect your meds the most. Dairy, leafy greens, grapefruit, alcohol, and foods with the amino acid tyramine are the top five foods and products that can affect the medicine you take. Let's start with dairy. Products such as milk, cheese, and fortified juices can affect the antibiotics you take. It's because these foods are high in calcium, which interferes with absorbing your medicine. That it's important to avoid calcium-rich foods at least an hour before or maybe two hours after taking the antibiotic. Leafy greens like kale, spinach, and collard greens have vitamin K in them. Eating high amounts of this vitamin does not allow for blood thinner medications to work properly. You need to eat leafy greens, but it's important to be consistent with how much you're eating on a daily basis. Registered dietitian Vijaya Butla with Alamo Nutrition Consultants says you should avoid eating or drinking grapefruit as much as possible. People say, well, I don't drink grapefruit, but you might drink uh, maybe sodas that have grapefruit extracts or grapefruit juices in them. Grapefruit and grapefruit juice affect statins, which are the medications that help lower cholesterol. It also affects medications used for high blood pressure and antidepressants. Next is any food that contains the amino acid tyramine. 
These include aged and cured meats, as well as hard cheeses, red wine, and soy products. Eating high amounts of tyramine can counteract medicines used to treat depression and other diseases like Parkinson's. It can also be dangerous. And if that happens, our blood pressure can rapidly go up, which can cause you to feel dizzy, headaches, nausea, vomiting, and potentially even a stroke. Lastly, alcohol can have a huge impact on many medications, including antihistamines, aspirin, antibiotics, depression medication, and sleeping pills. So it's really important to avoid drinking alcohol while taking any of these medications. So what can be done to help prevent your future health problems? What less says to talk with your doctor and pharmacist. Anytime a new medication is prescribed, you want to ask, hey, are there any foods that might interact with them? Something else Botla stresses is it's not necessary to cut all these foods out, but to eat them in moderation and to never skip a meal. Haley Powers, KSAT 12 News. 645. And more people joining the fun on the roadways. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen. Steph, I always like the way you put things. Uh, fun on the roadways. All right, we're going to look at it that way. Well, at least it's not too bad here at 35 at New Braunfels. North and southbound lanes just getting a little bit busier. I spotted some flashing lights over here on Transguide. I'll change the shot up in just a bit. Looks like it could be a stall vehicle. But really, we've just seen a lot of the construction that is taking place in and around our area. And as a reminder, although we had some overnight work wrap up, we have more work expected to take place a little bit later this morning and if you drive through I-10 in Kendall County, you may have seen it that uh, sod placement that is taking place. This is going to wrap on Friday, July 21st. We still have some ways to go, so just pack some patience there for some crews that are working to make things a little bit better out there. Uh, keep in mind, we're going to see this work start around 9 in the morning and it should wrap at 3 in the afternoon. Single lane closures along the frontage road in both directions from State Highway 46 to Scenic Loop. But uh, always head over to KSAT.com slash traffic. There's a full list of closures, as you know. It's never ending here in the Alamo City, but I do want to get it back here at US 90 at 35. There are those flashing lights off in the distance. This does look like a stall vehicle along the shoulder lane, not impacting traffic, but 90. Uh, one of those areas that gets pretty busy around this time. Oh, yeah, it sure mm -hmm. does. All right. Caption contest. Okay. <laughs> Who wants to start today? <laughs> Mark, ladies. Go. Oh, OK. I was going to say ladies first. Oh, oh, it's swimsuit season. That well, we got to see the picture, though. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. There you go. Oh, okay. There. Swimsuit season. Swimsuit see season. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Gosh. Uh, sunscreen, please. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I only have eyes for you. Oh, oh Mark, uh, that's good. That's good, man. Mine is, what do you mean I got to get out of the water? Oh, oh that's yeah, a, that's a good <laughs> one, too. <laughs> it's a great little splat. I got to get one of those things for our dogs. Was that the dog that we showed yeah. yesterday? Yes, oh, but wow, this is the yeah. front of the this dog. This is the front, kind of the front view, yes. 180. Oh, wow. Anyway. See, now you see it's a two-piece. Well, that or the water is a little too cold. Cold when Aww. it stepped in there. So, anyway, thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. And uh, as well, a helicopter flying over the airport. A few uh, morning clouds hanging around here right now. 78 degrees, 71 Rio Medina, and mid 70s parts of the uh, the hill country. Throughout the rest of the morning, we're going to make it up through the 80s, of course. A couple of leftover clouds hanging around here. And then nothing but blazing sunshine. And remember, if you're in the direct sun, add 10, 15 degrees approximately to some of these numbers. So you're not just feeling the air temperature, which is what those numbers are, but it's heating you up. The sun is. We're going to make it up to 104 later on today, three days in a row now. Here's the uh, water vapor imagery and great view. It's almost like a, I don't know, kind of sometimes like an x ray of the atmosphere, if you will. And it's perfect uh, example of the clockwise rotation that high which is parked just off to the west of us and what that's going to do though as we go on in time is get us into more of a pronounced northwesterly flow so hopefully that's going to give us something as far as uh, a couple of showers around here but don't get really excited about that that is tropical storm of the leftovers of tropical storm Don out here in the middle of the uh, North Atlantic and there is a little wave just right around the Cape Verde Islands but that's it as of right now out there in in the tropics, a lot of clear skies out there. Computer model for us going into the weekend. We were talking about that uh, bit of a better enhanced northwesterly flow. And so that's why a couple of showers are going to be trying to pop up. Like I said, I don't get really excited about these rain chances, but at least the opportunity is going to be there. That'll be the case Sunday kind of a little bit more of the uh, sea breeze style of a few showers here along the coastal plain. Same thing going into the first part of next week. You know, one or two extra clouds hoping to or helping to, I should say, 
keep temperatures down just a, a degree or two each and every day. 103 tomorrow, low hundreds going in over the, uh, the weekend. And again, those rain chances are pretty much in the slim to none. But like I said, at least there's going to be the opportunity for a shower or two. Don't get excited about it, though. OK, an opportunity, but over a few days, not just one. True. A few tiny yes. opportunities. And she's always finding the, the silver lining here. There's more than one. We'll take that. Thank you, Mike. About 10 till 78 degrees on your Wednesday morning. And still ahead, over 55 million people around the globe live with dementia, and that number is expected to go up. Tomorrow on GMSA, some bad habits that could be impacting your brain. Outside with Live Cam, thanks for starting your day with GMSA. We're back after this break. Welcome back. It is 6.53. Project MEND is the oldest and largest licensed nonprofit that accepts and repurposes medical equipment. And it is gearing up for its annual citywide donation drive. So on Thursday, our case that community partners are coming together to help Project MEND. We will be hosting a phone, a phone bank to collect financial donations to buy more wheelchairs, which is the most requested and needed piece of medical equipment. So the phone bank will be from noon to 2 p.m. and from 5 until 10.30 p.m. This will be taking place ahead of the equipment donation drive that happens on Saturday at the Wonderland of the Americas. For more information, check out ksetcommunity.com. Again, phone bank tomorrow. All right, happening tonight, San Antonio ISD holding a summer educator job fair. They're looking for people to work at elementary, middle, and high schools. The fair happening at Lanier High School tonight from 5 to 7 p.m. Bring your resume and good luck. And no one matched all the numbers in Monday night's Powerball drawing. So today's jackpot is estimated to be $1 billion. This is only the seventh time in U.S. history that a lottery jackpot has reached at least $1 billion. So your chance of winning the jackpot is 1 in 292 million. That's according to the Powerball website. Let's check traffic. It's just about 6.55. It's moving, Mark. Uh, 410 at Jackson Keller. We have our cameras on rotation, so if you are sitting at home and you have to hit the roads, take a look at what you can expect. There's 281 at jones Maltzberger. Great time to hit the roads there because we know 281 is one of those areas. It gets pretty crowded with folks. 281 at Grayson. You're seeing it pick up a little bit more as folks are inching closer to the downtown area. And 90 at Couples, not a bad shot. But we take you to our map, and we're seeing a lot of the construction. The only slowdown that I'm spotting at this hour is along 35 northbound. Traffic's moving pretty slowly out near Division Avenue, and we're seeing it move at just around 30 miles per hour. So just watch out. Expect maybe some taillights out there, uh, but no real big delays if you're traveling into San Antonio this early in the morning. Uh, we are taking a wide look now at our travel times. If you can see it right there, 25 minutes. So if you're heading along 281 from Bulverde, uh, 29 minutes along 35 southbound, heading in from New Braunfels, and about a 24 minute commute along I 10 from Bernie. We're going to continue to track a lot of these travel times, but uh, we know we're also going to have to track a lot of construction, Mike. It's going to be hot. Oh, very hot. 104 again today. We right now, as you can see, have a couple of clouds hanging around here. 78 degrees, mid 70s hill country, a little bit above our normal low temperature, which is 75 and then 104 later on today. Third day in a row for that. The normal average high temperature is 95. So obviously we are way above par and that will remain the case. Now heat advisories, excessive heat warnings are in effect for parts of the area, even though things have been maybe downgraded a little bit or not uh, issued. Obviously use those precautions and just take it easy if you're outside today. Are there still Definitely. ice cream trucks around that roll oh, around neighborhoods? I, <laughs> I haven't seen I one in ours in a while. Maybe, maybe some like paletta vendors and things know. like that. Just reminiscing about a way to keep cool. <laughs> yes, my guys.